I was really afraid to make this video for a long time and I'm sorry that I didn't make it sooner. We're a very new company and frankly, I wasn't sure how to deal with copycats. And I knew that if people had this info, that they could use it to copy other people's homework instead of innovating. But our mission at 100 Concepts is to make Americans more lethal and harder to kill. And withholding this information is in direct violation of that. Turns out it didn't really matter anyway. There's lots of other companies that are selling our products with their logos on them. And it's also happened to a lot of really good friends of ours. But I also believe there's a lot of creative people out there that can do a ton of good with this tool, which is why today we're talking about 3D printing and how you can use it to solve problems and make innovative products right here in the United States. So plastic's been around since the 1800s, but manufacturing processes for it have remained pretty expensive, with tooling costs being in the tens of thousands. It's been inaccessible for small businesses like ours and innovators. And that all started to change about 45 years ago. So in 1980, this guy named Dr. Hideo Kadama filed a patent for a machine that would harden liquid resin into solid materials and build parts layer by layer. This is the first form of a technology we now call 3D printing. So unlike subtractive manufacturing that removes material from a larger block, 3D printing is additive, meaning it builds objects layer by layer. In the years since Kadama's invention, lots of other methods have been developed, and today we're gonna to talk about some of those. So let's start with the one you're probably most familiar with, fused deposition modeling. This takes a thin plastic filament and extrudes it through a hot nozzle. This will lay down a thin plastic strip in a design and then put another one on top of that and another one on top of that until you have your finished 3D object. These filaments come in a variety of materials for different mechanical properties as well as pretty much any color you could imagine. They're getting cheaper and easier to use by the year, which is why they've exploded in popularity, which is also why this is probably what you think of when you think of 3D printing. We use them at the beginning of our product development process to take ideas and turn them into a physical object in a matter of just a few hours. And then we'll refine that design over the weeks and months until we're ready to go to production prototyping. But it's not without its drawbacks. FDM printing is anisotropic, which means that it behaves differently depending on the direction of forces applied. Put simply, this means that the layer lines are the weakness. It's also a little lower resolution than the other printing technologies, which means it has kind of a rougher surface finish, and certain geometries called overhangs can't be printed without support, which further degrades the surface finish. So next, let's talk about liquid resin printing. And there are lots of different technologies that do this, but they all operate on the same principle that Dr. Kadama tried to patent in 1980, which is essentially, instead of using an extruded filament, objects are created by hardening layers of liquid resin using light. Now, it generally has a higher resolution and better layer adhesion than FDM printing, which is why it's ideal for small and hard use products, which is why it's common in the medical and the dental industries, but most importantly for society, miniatures for tabletop gaming. But it also has its trade-offs. Generally, it's slower, messier, and more technical than FDM printing, which is why, despite having better properties, it's never really surpassed FDM printing in popularity. Finally, let's talk about powder-based printing. This solves a lot of the problems we've talked about so far, and they generally fall into two technologies, selective laser sintering and multi-jet fusion. SLS uses a laser, and MJF uses a process similar to your printer at home, but otherwise, they generally use the same process, which is they lay down a thin layer of plastic powder and then they create a design in that powder that fuses it together Then they lay down another thin layer of powder and they repeat this process until the parts are built. Now the big difference here is that those parts at the end of the build are suspended in this plastic powder. This allows us to pack a lot more parts per print which makes it very efficient for production manufacturing but also because they're suspended in there it allows us to keep the temperatures a lot higher for longer which fuses the layers together better, making a part that is quasi-isotropic, making it much stronger and has much more you know, attractive surface finish. So why doesn't everybody use powder-based printing? I bet you can guess the trade-off is cost. SLS machines start around $25,000 and the MGF machines that we use can cost over a half million dollars. I've never met an entrepreneur or an inventor that can afford machinery like that, but that's why contract manufacturers exist. They own and operate the machines to make your design for you. Now, because MJF is more expensive, that cost gets carried over to the parts. 
This is our spotter cap. It's our most expensive product. And for that reason, it's the one that a lot of people point to when they tell us we charge too much money for our products. They know that it's made with 3D printing and they assume it is made with FDM printing and therefore it couldn't cost more than a few cents to make. Well, here is an FDM printed spotter cap and this cost us $1.59 to print. By contrast, the MJF version costs us over a hundred times more than that. And this isn't frankly a great example because MJF excels at really smaller parts where you can pack a bunch of them into one print. This is our light cap. It was our first product and the first of its kind. And now you can buy them all over the internet with other people's logos at lower prices, sometimes even half as much. But what they don't tell you is that, sure, we charge twice as much, but it costs us 36 times more to make this with MJF. And that's because it's more impact resistant, more thermal resistant, more resistant to UV and chemical degradation. This is a product you're supposed to be able to trust your life with. And if that's the case, I wouldn't trust anything less. And sure, MJF costs more, but it allows creators like me to bring ideas to life in a really professional way that otherwise would have cost me tens of thousands of dollars with injection molding. And because there are no molds, we have virtually infinite products that we can make. We've released over 150 products in the last few years, and we couldn't have done that if it cost us $10,000 every time we made a new product. Now, 3D printing, like any technology, is a two-edged sword. You can use it to do a lot of good, or it can do a lot of harm. Looking at the good, there's companies like HRF Concepts that introduced us to MJF manufacturing, and they're super talented and super generous guys that have made really cool designs over the last few years. Or companies like Flux Defense that used MJF to develop their Raider platform. Companies like Great Plains Creations have developed radio accessories, Noise Fighters has used it to make innovative night vision mounts. And these are just all examples of small companies that have been able to make really innovative and useful solutions in a really professional way without having to spend $10,000 on a mold. But on the flip side, it can also do a lot of harm. Most of those companies I just talked about have copycats that are making their products with somebody else's logo. And the same thing's happening to us. There are websites out there with virtually our entire product line, but it's made with FDM printing instead of MJF. And because it's much cheaper, they're able to sell it for less, even though it's frankly not as good as MJF. But there are also companies that are making our product line with MJF and still selling it for cheaper. And the reason they can do this is because it doesn't actually cost them anything. There's one company in particular that's bought from us 16 times under five different names. And soon after their package arrived, our products mysteriously get listed on their website with their logo. And now these companies will tell you about their noble mission to save you more money but they're not actually going to create anything new. They just have to be cheaper than us. Now, this isn't some video about poor OHC, but we see the Reddit posts where you talk about how expensive our products are and link to a place where you can buy it cheaper. And if you're going to do that, I want you to at least know why they are cheaper. When you buy from us and companies like HRF Concepts and Flux Defense, you are supporting companies that are actively trying to innovate and make things that make you more lethal and harder to kill. So you want to make a firearms accessory business. I recommend getting started with FDM printing because it's very affordable these days. It's getting easier to use by the year and it allows you just to get hands on at home and start playing with these designs. You can even sell a lot of FDM products. I know there are companies out there that have started entire businesses with just one printer at home. But maybe FDM doesn't have enough resolution or layer adhesion, then you might look at liquid resin printing as another good way to get started at home. But if you've got an idea that you really believe in, that you think other people will love and you're willing to bet on yourself, I say go for MJF. It's simply the best combination of precision and durability and scalability for your business. And if you've got an idea that you're really excited about, please send us an email. I would love to introduce you to our manufacturer. I do this all the time and I'm really stoked about some of the really cool products that have come out of it. But maybe you don't want to start a business. You're just a regular guy who's interested in 3D print. Well, I'd love to help you get started, which is why we're releasing the files for our original light cap for free, as well as a 3D printing guide to get you started. Our mission at 100 Concepts is to make Americans more lethal and harder to kill. And I believe that a world where you can print a light cap for your squad is more dangerous and free. So click the link in the description to get started printing the product that started this company. And finally, maybe none of that interests you and you just want a quality product made in the USA by guys who continue to innovate. If that's you, please consider supporting us and we will keep working to help you become more lethal and harder to kill.